We're gonna show you how to take old wood and turn it into those really awesome cutting boards that cost a million dollars. So stay tuned to save money and find out something cool. All right, so this board here is salvaged and it's actually a hundred years old. It was out of the ceiling here when we were cutting the ceiling joists out. But now we're gonna do the super technical part. This is the really hard part here, okay? This is the thing that you don't wanna miss or else you won't know how to do it. <laughs> All right, so I wanna get two really big cutting boards out of this. So this board has some splits and chips and dings and things like that, but it is approximately 76 inches long. So 36 and a half is, no, 38 and, let's do 38 inches on the center. So the hard part, if you're chuckling right now, is the math. 36 and a half. 38 is what it is? Yeah, because it's 76. Oh, my math is faulty. See, I told you it was the hard part. <laughs> Lessons on working with your spouse. Don't say told you so, say you might be wrong. We get asked a lot, how do you work with your spouse? How do you work with me? Every day I just wake up and we start having fun. Yeah. All right, so what's next? All right, so next, Basically gonna say, okay, two, <laughs> two hand measurements. All right, let's do one for your hands. Okay. All right, that's gonna be my handle, right? And this is 11 inches wide. So right at five and a half is my center. And I want, let's say, let's go a two inch handle, okay? So I've got one inch from there from the center and an inch over here from center. Okay, so that is my handle width. Okay, I've got my marks. They're kind of hard to see because this board is so old, right? I've got my- I my... bet this is two inches wide. You are correct. But That's I need to tip see... number two. But I need to see my mark though. Always tell your wife when she's right. Or is that tip number one? <laughs> That's tip number one. It's tip number one. I have my other pro tip about working with your spouse is always make sure they're fed. That usually falls in my department. <laughs> I brought you some McDonald's this morning. I forget to eat when I'm working. I know. Okay, so we've got the handle measured out, right? Now we want to decide how we want the shoulders to look. We could just bring them straight over, but I'm going to do a little taper right here. Okay. And he's just doing that by hand. Some of these boards, they come up a little bit too. I've seen that done. So I think I'm gonna do like a fun angle on this. Yeah, don't do too straight. If you're interested in like different designs, if you just look up antique cutting boards, you'll see a myriad of designs and then just, you know, make it look the way you want it to. The thing about these old cutting boards is people were making them by hand using hand tools. So they definitely were not perfect. So don't like stress out if it's not exactly the same because you don't want it to look like it came off of, uh, off of what's it called? What's that word? Yeah. An assembly line. assembly line. Yeah, you don't want it to look like it came off an assembly line. All right, so we've got one side drawn out, okay? Now we're gonna cut it, and I'm gonna have Jamie show you how she uses the jigsaw. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Tip number three, always be careful when your wife uses power tools. We're gonna cheat a little and not use the jigsaw. You could totally use the jigsaw to make this, but Jamie's just gonna cut this in half real quick so that we've got the two pieces. Okay. So everybody's always saying, oh, it must be nice to have a Zeb or, or someone that can build for you, but guess what? Jamie can use the tools. Tip number four is if you teach a wife to use the tools, she won't always nag you. <laughs> Maybe I will, I don't know. You don't nag, you just ask nicely. Sometimes it's nice. We've got these basic shapes cut out, right? Nice, big, huge cutting board. But this handle is square. It is not comfy to hold on to. So we're gonna fix that. I've got my $20 angle grinder that I bought from Walmart like 10 years ago. Works great. And this is a wood carving disc. You can pick them up at most hardware stores. I get mine at Harbor Freight. They're like six bucks and last forever. I've only bought two the whole time I've been making stuff. All right, so now we've got the basic shape of the handle, right? But there's some gouges here. This is real rough and gross, and I've got nail holes and things. 
and some gouges up front here. So I'm gonna take the grinder with the carving wheel and just kind of shape it around where I want it. And it's gonna give it a really old aged effect. Now we've got the trouble of we've got grinder marks on here and we've got new exposed raw wood with aged wood that's been sitting around for a hundred years. Enter the random orbital sander with 80 grit sandpaper. We're gonna smooth all this out. We're gonna zip all this off so it's all nice and uniformly colored. And that way it's nice and clean. And we're gonna seal it with hemp oil so that it's food safe. I'm done with the 80 grit. Now I'm just gonna go over it and make a couple light passes with some 220 grit. They kind of look like kerf marks from the grinder carving wheel, which we like, but they're a little too sharp. They don't look old. So you're telling me, Jamie, I don't have any of this magic 100 year old wood. No problem. You can create a similar look with brand new wood from Home Depot. This is a two by six, but they also make two by eight, two by 10, two by 12. So you get the width that you want. We're just gonna show you on this small, leftover board that we have here at the farmhouse. You're gonna find center, same way like the big boards. And then on this one, cause it's not as wide, I'm gonna kinda just make a rounded handle on it. And then we're gonna come down like that. It's gonna look kinda like a, I don't know, like a man, like a snowman. <laughs> and then on this end. Are you gonna leave it that long? Uh, you can leave it however long you want. It might be cool long. Well, probably... Because like, it's going to be like a server. Proportionate-wise, yeah. So it'll probably come around this way and arch it. Yep. But that's about right. And this will be kind of a server. We'll try to leave as much of width on there as possible. Zeb will cut that out. I was thinking in this one, we'll just drill a hole here and make a cute little server board out of it. And we'll show you how to age this to make it look like that old wood. Okay, so now comes the fun part that doesn't involve any sawdust getting in my hair. I have Sweet Pickens Milk Paint in Zinc and Galvanized. You could also use farmhouse finishes. They're USDA Bio Certified, which means they're food safe. I'm mixing these up, about 10 parts uh, water to one part of the powder, just to kind of a stain consistency. This is a great use when you have just a little bit of the powder left in your package and you don't have enough for a project. If it's in the brown and gray tones, it's really perfect for making faux stain. All right, so I'm gonna kind of splotch on this darker stain first. Well, and because it's so watered down, it dries a lot lighter than that looks. Oh yeah. I'm just kind of trying to create a blended paint finish here. <laughs> The edges tend to usually be darker, so I'm gonna use the zinc along the edges here. It's kind of tricky to get it down in this crevice here that we drilled out, so I just kind of let it fall down the sides and I'll do the same thing on the other side. You could also use a little fine brush too. While it's still wet, we're just gonna go ahead and wipe that stain back off. I've got a lint-free rag here. Now here's the thing. I used zinc and galvanized. You could use black, you could, use white and like make your own shades of gray. No need to buy any specific color, just shades of brown and gray are usually best. Next up is the hemp oil. It is a all natural food safe sealer. This is by Sweet Pickens. You can pick this up and the milk paint at jamierayvintage.com. I just like to pour a little on there and you're gonna apply it liberally and thick. The thing about this hemp oil is it puts a nice finish on it. We've used butcher block oil in the past and this is definitely 
um, the better option. You can also see it richens up the color quite a bit. Hemp oil can be used over Sweet Pickens Milk Paint, Farmhouse Finishes, or DIY paint. It creates a satin finish, and it also works over raw wood like this. I really love that when you put the oil on, it really brings the richness and the age back to the wood. After it sits anywhere from like five to 25 minutes, you're gonna go ahead and wipe back the oil with a lint-free rag. If you feel any catching when you're wiping it off, that's a good indication that once it's completely dry, you might need to come back, give it a light sanding, and then put some more oil on because you don't want anybody to get splinters. So this is the old wood, no faux stain, just oil wax. This is the new wood with the gray tones. And this is old wood and I went ahead and used our leftover milk paint faux stain on it to give it more of a gray look. It's interesting the color that it changes from um, being newer wood and then this is older wood. It just has more red deep tones. Is that just the age though? Yeah, that's a lot. Of, a lot of it's just that it's older and it could be a different species of wood. Like this could be, this could be Douglas fir and this could be white pine. Oh, okay. The milk paint stain does tone back some of the red colors in it, which is kind of fun. All right, we, we can't just leave them with four tips. What's your fifth tip for well, working you, with you this You gave box? like six tips and you kept calling it the fourth tip. <laughs> what? What tip are we on? I don't know. Why don't we just give any tip? What's, what's a Zeb tip for working with your spouse, especially one that's, you oh. know, like me, little, little bossy pants. Little bossy pants. <laughs> well, you are little. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. The, the best tip I could say is, I mean, Jamie already mentioned being well fed. That always is a perk, but just, uh, you know, be open to suggestions. Don't be so bought into your idea that you can't be flexible on what you want to do with a project. I agree with that one. I think the other one too is like, don't be grumpy forever about something that happened like three days ago. Yeah. Because we have one. tons of things that come up that create issues for us, but we get over it and move on. So we seem to have a never ending source of leftover pieces of wood. We're always looking for new creative ideas so that way that doesn't wind up going to waste and we can make a profit. I like the way that this looks on here. It almost looks like the old wood that we started with before we standed down those old pieces that were 100 years old. Old wood or new wood, don't let any of it go to waste. Use milk paint as well as some hemp oil to recreate some cutting boards for you or to sell in your shop. Make sure you're hitting up jamierayvintage.com for these products. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.